How's it going everyone? I'm Kyle and in this week's Python programming tutorial we're learning about iteration. In Python, just like with many other programming languages, we can use a for loop to do iteration and we can use the for loop to control how many times a piece of code repeats. So where we learned about the while loop last week, which is kind of like roughly you control how, how many times it repeats, with a for loop you can control precisely how many repetitions that code will go through before moving on to the next part of the program. However, iteration in Python has an even more expanded scope thanks to Python's object-oriented nature. And you know I had to say object-oriented uh, at some point again in the series. And with the object-oriented iterations, you can manipulate the data inside complex data types such as arrays, sets, dictionaries, etc. So you can iterate across these data types to uh, manipulate them, change the data, or even generate them from scratch, which is pretty awesome. There's really so many cool things that you can do with iteration, so let's just start diving into all of it right now. The for loop gets its own episode in my Python series because a for loop is so powerful in the Python programming language. There are so many th different things that you can do with iteration and, and whatnot. So let's dive right in and start learning stuff. The very first and uh, most elementary thing that you can do with a for loop is control, uh, do a, a loop for a very controlled amount of times. So let's say I have uh, four and declare some arbitrary variable i. Remember with Python you don't have to do anything special to declare a variable. So I just chose the letter i because that's the standard. Uh, for i in range and then type in however many times you would like to loop uh, the uh, thing. So let's say I want it to loop 15 times and then uh, do a, a colon and then now whatever's down here will be uh, looped exactly 15 times. What this exactly is technically doing is the range operator is a generator which we will learn in a later tutorial and it generates all numbers in the range from 0 to 15. Uh, with 15 being exclusive. So that's numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 14, which is 15 digits in total, or 15 numbers, I should say. And the I will go through all of them, and uh, once it gets to 15, then it exits and does something else. So let's say we can say print, um, let's have it print I each time. So then when we go through the terminal, we can see it go through each one. And then at the end here, this is the programming that will execute after the for loop is finished. We'll just say uh, finish. So then let's run this and see what we get. See, in this little toy example, it prints all of the numbers from 0 to 14. Just as I said, remember the range is a generator and it's exclusive, so it won't actually include 15. And then after that, it finished and it got to this end statement here and printed finished. So that's just pretty much... Um, uh, a very easy way they can use a for loop to uh, control a, in a precise amount of repetitions of a loop. Now another really awesome thing that you can do with iteration in Python is you can iterate across uh, data types such as lists, or, aka arrays, tuples, uh, even sets and dictionaries. Although it's discouraged to do sets and dictionaries because those are quite slow. Lists are ideal. So to prepare for this I've made a couple of lists that I can use uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. So what we can do is we could say for i in the range, uh, now instead of just saying the range of some number, we can now use it for the length, which is what len is. So this len operator in the middle here will give you the length of any set or list, so basically the number of elements in it, so in cars. And we can get this, so we'll say print i just a very simpler, sim, uh, similar example and say print uh, done. So then when we run this it'll print a number for every element in my cars. So there are five of them which corresponds to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, of course 5 of course being exclusive because we start counting uh, at 0. And um, yeah that's that's pretty much what that looks like. So you can iterate over the range and what you can also do with that is you could say um, so also print um, cars at i so this will not only print i but it also will print cars at that index and as we go across see we have 0 Audi 1 Nissan 2 Benz uh, and we just keep going like that now there's an easier way to do this but I'll, I'll get to that in a second but what we can use this for is we can use this to uh, mutate the uh, the list as we go across it. So let's say we want 
cars at i. And uh, in our toy example here, we can add an exclamation point to the end of every single uh, string that's in here. So remember we learned about concatenation, so this is simply going to concatenate an exclamation point, and at the end we want to print our uh, modified array here again, and it should print all of the cars with an exclamation mark after their name. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we can see that we've had success. So we have the original list, but now an exclamation point has been inserted. So I use the for loop to mutate every member of this array. Now there's an even easier way to go across uh, members of this array, and this is using object-oriented programming, uh, which is my new favorite thing in the world. So instead of writing for i in the range of the length, instead what you can do is you could say for and uh, declare some kind of arbitrary variable. So for every car that is in our list of cars, plural, and now what this is going to do is it's going to step across the array, but now every time it steps across, each individual index will become an object, which is symbolically represented in car. So for the first iteration of this for loop, car is going to equal, be equal to Audi. And for the second iteration, car is equal to Nissan. For the third iteration, car is equal to Benz, uh, and so on and so forth. And so we could see what this looks like. So we'll say print car. And this is a way to do it without using an i variable, without indexing and stuff like that, right? Uh, so I'll just I'll just get rid of this real quick, and then we can see what this does. See, it printed the name of every single car in our list. Now I'm going to use this other array that I made, which is an array of a whole bunch of numbers, just arbitrary numbers. And let's say I want to make an iterative loop that will double, make a new array that contains all of the numbers in numbers. Uh, in this nums array, but doubled. So I'm going to initialize a new array, so call it double nums, uh, but we're going to initialize this as a completely empty array. And now we're going to iterate across every number, so for every number in nums, and remember uh, this variable right here is arbitrarily named, so instead of number I could name it, I don't know, chicken or something like that. It's uh, just arbitrarily named, but this symbolically will capture every single number as it goes through each iteration. So, for example, in the first iteration, this will this number will be two, and the second it will be five, and so on and so forth. Follow that with a colon, and we'll indent into the body of the for loop, and we'll say, um, well, now we need to populate the double nums array, right? So we'll make a new number, so new num equals the number at this iteration times 2. And then we'll append this new number to double nums. So we'll say double nums dot append new number. And then at the end we will print our original nums array and we'll also print double nums so we can compare them. So then we'll let's run this and the result that we have here now is we have two arrays so this is the original and this is the doubled one and you can see that they have the same length but every number in the second array is double what the original one was that's because we stepped through every single index of the original array multiplied it by two and then appended it to a new array and that's how uh, that's pretty much what we did with the iteration now as i said before you definitely can iterate with a set it's just much slower and it's uh, it is is really preferred that you would use um, that you would use a list for iteration because it's just uh, the set is just slower because the list is designed for iteration. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous tutorial, there are advantages and disadvantages to using uh, sets versus lists and whatnot. And in this case, whenever you're iterating over something, you want to make sure that you're using uh, a list instead of a set. You can even iterate across a dictionary, and for the same reason you wouldn't want to iterate across a set, it's kind of slow, don't iterate directly off of the dictionary. But instead, let's say I have a dictionary um, with some keys, right? So I have key one, um, and then some number. Then I have a key two, and then some other number, 89, let's say. And I want to make a new dictionary, so dictionary2, which is um, currently empty, and I want each value in dictionary2 to be 2 greater than my original, right? So what I can do with that is uh, initialize an empty dictionary, 
and then as I iterate across, right, um, what we're going to do is instead of iterating across the dictionary directly, which you certainly could say for key in a dictionary, instead what we want to do is uh, say uh, for key in our original dictionary, which is called diction dot keys. And remember what we did uh, in a previous tutorial with the dictionaries is that dot keys gives you in the form of an array all of the keys in our given dictionary which will make iteration much faster. So then what we can do is we can retrieve the uh, data stored in our original uh, diction at that key. And remember a key is our arbitrary variable that changes with each iteration to capture each, uh, each key that's going around. So this is the, va the value and we want to add 2 to it, right? So we'll store this as a new value and we're making a dictionary with all the same keys so we will say um, our new dictionary which is called uh, dictionary oh I really should have given these less confusing names dictionary.update and we'll update this with a new dictionary entry with that key but with a new value and so now as this goes across so I'm going to print the original dictionary which is called diction side by side with our new modified dictionary uh, which is called dictionary um, again, I should have chosen better names for these, but uh, oh well, I'm in it now. So dictionary, and you should see that they should have the same keys, but our new dictionary, all of its values are two greater than the old one. So let's see what that looks like. And there we have it, success. See, each number is two greater than the original, but all of the keys are the same. So that's how you would handle iterating across a dictionary. Before finishing this video, I want to show you one more example of recursion that's a little bit more advanced. So imagine this sample problem that I've cooked up here. We have this, which is a 3x3 three three chessboard. So there are 9 spaces in total, and 8 of them are blank, and on one of them is a king, which is represented by this k. And what we want to do is create a simple iterative program that tells us the coordinates of the king. Now, it's easy for you to just look with your eyes and say, oh, it's on this coordinate. But imagine you had a really large chessboard that was 100 by 100. It might take a while for a person to find. However, a Python program can easily find it. And the program I'm going to show you now can abstract to a chessboard of any size, not just 3 by 3. I also want you to take a quick look at the representation of this chessboard. As you can see, it's a nested array, or in other words, an array within arrays. So there's this big outer array, which is what's called the chessboard array, and it has three indices. Uh, there's this guy, this guy, and then there's one more underneath it, right? And each of those indices is itself an array of three indices. So if you think about it, Iterating across the top level chessboard will go across these rows and it's kind of like looking through the Y coordinates and then once you've chosen a row you can iterate across the columns which is like iterating across the X coordinates and so when we found the king uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, say well we found the king and we want to print those coordinates so what that looks like in the programming is uh, something like this we're going to need nested for loops which means a for loop inside of a for loop so we're going to say for um, for i in the range of the length of the outermost which is the chessboard and this is going to be stepping across the y coordinates right um, and then so we're going to say uh, for j in range of the uh, length of the now actually it might be worthwhile to say um, for space because now we're just looking for the king in chessboard at i right and if this space happens to equal our king then we can say uh, oh this should be an if statement my bad so if the space is equal to k we will print found king and we will break from this loop so we'll say break and so then when we run this it'll step through and eventually it finds the king it says found king and then it stops okay so that's great we found the king but where is the king so I'm going to adapt this program so that it actually returns the coordinates where the king is located so to adapt this programming what we're going to do is instead of 
uh, symbolically declaring spaces, we're going to do something similar to what we did up here. So for i in range of the length of chessboard, then we want for j in the range of the length of the chessboard now at i. And you can see now it's more apparent that the iteration on the second level is going to be dependent on whatever iteration is on the top level here. So we iterate through each i, and then we're going to iterate through each j within each i, which kind of represent those coordinates, right? Um, and so then our condition instead becomes if chessboard at i at j, so now these, these kind of like act as our coordinates. This is an x coordinate, and this is a y coordinate. If that happens to equal k, which is our king, not only will we print found king, but we can also print those coordinates. Uh, we'll say found king. And we can print a tuple of those coordinates. So let's say we have a tuple of i, comma, j. And then so then when oh we also want to break when we're done because uh, you don't want to keep iterating when you don't have to. So then when we run this, it says found king and says we got it at 1 comma 2, which is uh, 1 down on the y coordinate and 2 on the x coordinate. Yeah, so my x, co x and y coordinates are flipped, um, but it, it doesn't really matter. We still found the king and we still uh, found his coordinates. So that's a, a very simple um, king finding program on an arbitrary size chessboard. And this will work with a chessboard of any size. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.